Welcome, it's Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. This is the 10th of March. Uh, today's topics, we've got simplifying translation cont contributions with crowd in enterprise. Alex is going to share a, a presentation for us. We're going to have a discussion based on contents of, of some things he's been doing for the last two years in other open source projects. Then we want to talk briefly about SheCode Africa Contributhon. And Elizabeth had a question about internships that we'd like to address here. Any other topics we need to put on the list? Um, so I don't know if you got a chance to review the PR I submitted. Um, oh yes, troubleshooting PR. Yeah. Good. I haven't reviewed it yet, Zinab. It will be okay. It will be later this week at the best before I can All review right. it because. I've got other other things that I have to do and review first. No problem, sure. But it fits, it aligns with what Gavin had requested. And I think it makes sense. If time allows, we may review it uh, later today in the in the Asia office hours as well. Okay. So sorry, later today is the wrong phrasing. For you in, in Africa, it'll be tomorrow, the middle of the night. <laughs> All right. So, so I will. I hope that we get to it, and if not, I, I have hopes that I'll get to it over the weekend. All right. Thank you for doing it. No problem. Any other topics we need to add to the agenda? Okay, then let's take on the translation contributions topic. Alex, do you want to share your screen? How would you like to approach it? Yeah, that would be great if you- Okay, so I'm gonna stop screen. sharing mine and you can go ahead and share your screen. Okay, let's think, uh, right. Yeah, that's, that would be the right moment here. I think we Perfect. have Jenkins here right now. Can everyone see this? Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. my issue with translating was always the way how to get started, how to get into it because yeah, Jenkins plugins are always on or mostly on GitHub. And if you want to contribute to GitHub, you need some understanding how to work with Git, how to work with GitHub, how to work with branches, how to open a pull request and so on. So I kind of see this as entry barrier. At least that used to be an entry barrier for me a few years ago. <laughs> so I look for an alternative to translate plugins or software outside from Jenkins. That's where I basically get started. And Crowd and Enterprise was one of the first things that came into my mind. So yeah, currently there are only, I think, two ways to translate Jenkins plugins. One, the localized plugin where you have this small button here and you can yeah, fill this out and submit it, but that actually doesn't really work anymore because the locale server is offline or something, at least according to the repository on GitHub which was last edited in 2020. So I assume it's either no longer maintained, doesn't no longer work. Anyway, this way you can only contribute local translations. So I think the active way to contribute translations in Jenkins is to go the way via pull requests, like via GitHub. And that is where Crowdin Enterprise can help you to go around it to skip the possible entry barrier. I Fork this, my my uh, console column plugin. This is a bare clone of the console column plugin on Jenkins. It's a, it's a public repository. Everyone can check out if they want, which are integrated into Crowdin Enterprise for demonstration purposes. So yeah, uh, Crowdin Enterprise is actually not self-hosted. You host it on Crowdin itself, but you have a domain like jenkins.crowdin.com. Currently, I have it on a different domain because this is the only open source enterprise setup I have. So I simply edit a current enterprise Jenkins demonstration here. I think that is fine. We just ignore everything else but Jenkins. So if someone goes to, let's say, jenkins.coron.com or jenkinscr.coron.com and says, I want to translate, I want to help to contribute to this plugin, they can basically click on it. I want to provide the German translation. Just, just picking my language here. Please don't mind if you don't understand it. 
yeah, and they basically have the folder structure of the plugins and the files you can translate. See the typical properties file you have in each folder, like you have in the typical repository. Because if we switch back here, source main resources. Yeah, because this is actually the folder tree of the repository we have in Crowdin. So if I click on, I want to translate columnar properties. I have on the left side, the string suit translate. This is the way how I translate. For example, I want to translate, click to center the timeline on event. I click the string, I have it here. This is the source string. I can enter my translation here, but currently I have integrated Crowdin's machine translation here. So a Crowdin machine, Crowdin machine translation suggests me four appropriate strings to translate. Actually, they are all quite accurate. And I would say, click to center the timeline on event. And if I want to pick a machine translation and don't want to insert something on, I can basically click this one and save. And I translated it. That's basically it. Crowdin handles the integration from GitHub via pull requests and everything else. So I basically just need to do this. Yeah. And if I'm a project maintainer, let's say- So, so Alex, yeah. are you, do, you want, do you want questions during or do you, want, do you want to hold the questions till the end? Just if you to ask me, I think it's better to do it now than later. Okay, so, so you did not do anything with GitHub here at all, and yet it somehow found the plugin source code um, no, um, I mean, first time you need to set it up, like you need to tell it where to get the source code from. But right, but, but you as a user, you as a no, contributor. No, I'm as a user, I did nothing. Okay. I just did what you saw. And, and, the, and, and then the machine translation that it offered, you saved it. Would you then press some additional button that causes it to generate a pull request to propose that? Yeah, currently I have set up my integration to pull... I think every hour or every two hour to not flood my emails, but you can basically set it up to provide a pull request if you approved it, if you looked over it hourly, daily, whenever you want. This, this is something the, not the contributor, but the plugin author or plugin maintainer can customize as long as they have access to that. So, so, so I, as a maintainer, would configure, I want to bundle two hours worth of work on the Git plugin into a pull request. And, and the, the, the person who is doing the translation, in this case, your German language, would just sit there and do translations of strings. And I then get pull requests for roughly two hours worth of work? Yeah. Nice. Oh, that's <laughs> elegant. And, and so you did that. So the, the, the person perform providing the translation is not doing pull requests at all. And nope. yet to me as a maintainer, I receive pull requests and that's what I see. Yeah. But basically working, I mean, if you're working in reviewing the pull requests, this is also possible, but mostly I go via the proofreading thing. For example, currently I'm in the translator view or something like that. Let's call it translator view. This is what the person sees who translate the plugin. But I as maintainer can basically switch from crowdsourcing to proofreading. This is where I approve what people submitted. So it can basically encapsulate the entire Git part and do the entire thing here. So people who translate things don't need to go to GitHub and respond to pull requests if, if I have, if I request changes, for example. Ah, okay. So that this request yeah, changes is an the important part. part out here. Right. Okay. So here, though, if if I request changes from the GitHub pull request, it may not be visible in Crowdin. But if I do the give my feedback through Crowdin, then they see it as a sub, as a contributor. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can still do it on GitHub, but it would be easier to do it at Crowdin because the people are already using Crowdin, so mm -hmm. let's keep them here. Yeah, this is the string I just just translated. Click to the center of the timeline event. This is what I proposed from the machine translation. This is actually quite accurate. And I would say, okay, that's fine. We approve this. Yeah, okay, ignore line endings for now. But yeah, this is basically done. And this string is done. So if I go back to crowdsourcing and let's show only things to do. So th these are the only strings left. I can basically filter out all things that are already translated 
so people don't translate things twice, thrice, and so on. But you can always, like, or, this is already translated and already approved, but you can comment on it and say, hey, this is not right, this sounds wrong, the grammar is wrong, there's a spelling mistake, let's go over it again. So like you would a review a pull request on GitHub, you would basically do it here on Crowdin. And Crowdin is taking the existing translation and presenting it to you as a contributor. So it's, so for instance, the uh, last console translation that's visible now had been translated previously and was extracted from the source code? You mean the ma machine translations? No, no, the, the actual, so let's, let's the console. Console, or let, <laughs> let's the forgive console. my butchery of German. <laughs> Label console, or last console in German. That yeah. German language translation came from the properties file in the GitHub repository. Yes. Okay. I, would show the, I would like to show as well how to integrate it or how I set it up. That's what, that would be mostly like for maintainers. Let's quit the editor for now. So this is like the management tab of the Jenkins integration project. That okay. is what a maintainer could see if they set up their project. Currently, I can view everything because I own the organization, but with Encrowding, you can also find grain permissions and, con and, ex and control who can access which part, like you do on GitHub with repositories. So currently, uh, project settings, no, system. These are all the applications you can integrate with Crowdin. I have that we are currently on GitHub, and this is the repository. Yeah, we, are currently, we have currently integrated the master branch. I mean, you can integrate any branch. You can have a dedicated translation branch. But yeah. So, so now I'm not quite oh, yeah. understanding what what does this repository represent? So the it's not your plugin being translated. Is this a separate working repository? I'm not sure what what the GitHub repository here is representing. The GitHub repository is representing the. Oh, oh, okay. That is okay. When it says Jenkins Crowd in Enterprise Integration, that is the source code for the plugin. Yeah, I got remember. it. It's, it's actually a bear clone of that plugin with all Git history, just outsourced on my private account, so I don't have to mess with in Jenkins with it. Yeah. So basically, that's how you integrate it. You can define any branch, for example, the master branch, which I, yeah. Currently, I set up push sources. That means if you make a change, it pu it's pushed to a pull request on GitHub. But you can also set it up late, say like, hey, I want to sync it every hour. Then it gets synced hourly, for example. Yeah. I mean, quality assurance settings is like where you can define on which base the pull request is created. For example, yeah, punctuation, character settings, special characters. Spell checker, only if I currently ticked all and only if all conditions are met, a pull request is proposed. So like if someone inserts something that doesn't match my expectations, no pull request is open. Yeah, you have like a lot, lot of configuration options here, a whole extensive API you could create a repository through, like similar it's done with the, I think the repository permission updater, which adds CD credentials to your repository. For example, could integrate a cloud and API and create a project repository if a plugin author or maintainer opts in for that. That was my idea how you could integrate it into Jenkins without to do everything yourself. So so the the integration for you as a user, the workspace here would have one entry in the workspace per repository, per Jenkins repository to which you were contributing translations. So there might be one for core and one for each plugin that you were contributing to. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. The way I set it up would be a bit messy on Jenkins because I mean, currently I have only two projects using this instance, but if you have like hundred, that would definitely be a bit messy, but you can also create I mean, not an individual project, but you can also get a group and group projects together. Okay. I didn't do that here because this is only one repository and would look a bit weird, but you could say, let's create a group and I have an API, a library and uh, another plugin consuming the API, group them all into one and we display only one thing here. 
okay, so I could I could conceivably I manage I maintain six or seven plugins and I work on core. I could create a group that would represent the plugins I maintain, and I might create another group that rep and then it would only present one here. And then when I expand it, I would see all seven of the repositories, that kind of thing. Yeah, for example, I mean, it doesn't matter how you create a group. If you let's if you name the group my Git plugins and have a several Git plugins in there, or filter it by your Git name, at least like grouping things together. I see. All right. Yeah, I mean, another thing is like how to actually log into Crowd into Crowdin. Like, do I need to create a spec a new account for that? Is also I think often an interesting question. But currently, I have set up uh, authentication. No, that is the wrong thing. Uh, currently, I have set up authentication via GitHub, so I don't need to create an account on Crowdin at all. And yeah, typical email and username if someone wants to sign up here. I'm I si I'm signed in currently with OAuth from GitHub, so I have then because I'm an uh, organization owner of this organization here. I automatically have all permissions, so I didn't need to set up anything for me. So, so Crowdin, and I see the URL is crowdin.com. So they are hosting this service and yes. they're offering it at no charge to open source projects? Yes. Wow. The only, okay. the only thing you have, like, have to do is like, if you create a project, the product must be open source, must follow a license and so on like basic things that, that are already enforced in Jenkins. Yeah, so MIT license is yeah. certainly permissive enough for them and in, Jenkins in, in, is in a, all in, open source. In, I think, think any approved open source license is possible here. But the most Jenkins plugins are under MIT, so it shouldn't be an issue here. And even if you don't have MIT, they have a whole extensive list of licenses they support. Okay. So now when, when another user wants to contribute a localization to your plugin, let's say I want to contribute an Italian translation. Okay, I'm, I'm not, no, non sono molto bravo con italiano, ma parlo un poco. So let's say I wanted to contribute an Italian translation. Um, so I would log in and somehow I would see your repository or could attempt to contribute to it, or would I create my own project like you've done, and then it would somehow submit to the upstream upstream um, repository that I forked. I mean, if you want to contribute Italian to my language, to my thing, that is currently not possible because I've only enabled German. Ah, okay. But if you take a look at target languages, we have a quite extensive list of supported languages here. So if you say Mark wants to want to Italian, okay. Let's say Italian update. And we have Italian here, and you could get it ahead and enable this one. I currently have only enabled German for demonstration purposes. Like you saw the list, there are several hundreds of languages you can actually contribute. And now you, as a maintainer, are choosing which languages you will accept into the plugin? Uh, yeah. I mean, okay. that way I'm handling it for a few other repositories. Like if there is demand and someone says, hey, I would like to contribute language this one, could you enable it? Then I, then I go ahead and enable it. Because if you have a list of like 200 languages, it might be a bit too much to find your right. language. And well, well and it. if I don't have a contributor, I don't know why I would want a language enabled until they ask for it. So is, as an example, is traditional Chinese available as a language? Uh, target languages. Uh, yeah. Yes, Chinese Choose traditional. <laughs> okay, great. Excellent. Okay, so so we've got we've got some contributors in Taiwan who want to contribute a, or are contributing Chinese. So try Portuguese as well. Is Portuguese available? I assume it is. Or Brazilian Portuguese. Yeah. It is, and even better Brazilian Portuguese. You okay. Even, you can even enable both ones and say oh, we have Portuguese and Brazilian one, PTBR and PT. Excellent. Yeah. Currently I'm handling it like that, that, that I enable translations if there is demand to add one, because in the end, I still have to review it and look over them and merge the PRs. So it wouldn't make much sense to enable 200 languages nobody contributes to. Yeah. 
another thing that also works quite well is that the I think that is the I don't know how the file is named. There is a file, the Jenkins root directory that translates things, something in Perl written. Oh, oh, translation tool that, dot pl. Yeah. Right. I think I saw there are a few PRs to that, that which generates. If I, I think it generates strings that look like that one. Right. Yeah. Basically, these are omitted. If you remember the string from a few minutes ago. That would be uh, this one. Click your center timeline on event. That would be the string displayed in a more human readable language rather than having slashes in between of oh, every oh, word. Right, right. I see what you're saying. Your point is that, well, see, for me, the translation tool, the Perl translation tool is, is much, much more primitive than a web interface that you're presenting. Even yeah, for I, people who do development all the time, they will generally put things into a web interface like that much more comfortably than into, into a properties file. Yeah. I mean, you can, if you have already translated files from your plugin in different languages, you can also upload them on cloud and like you don't need to translate everything over and over again. That would be much pointless. But for example, for strings, for strings like that one, or if you have some HTML in that, or if you have variables in them, Crowdin is smart enough and figures that out. For example, these are the variables which are automatically highlighted and it says, do not translate variables. So if I say, started by user uh, only this one, and I leave out one and the other zero, it complains because I'm missing it out. Ah, okay. So it's doing it's doing sanity checking yeah. of of my did did I consume all the arguments? Yeah, that's what I enabled in the quality tab on the manage repository in Crowden. So uh, I mean you can save it anyway, but you get warned if you miss an argument. Same the same applies to the yeah, here one. I can also click on it and I have it all right. Yeah, so basically it does some, something of sanity checking. If I leave out arguments, yeah. I mean, you can define your own arguments with Crowdin as well, but I didn't do that here. It picked up this one on its own. And, and what is your perception? I'm very impressed by the machine translation. As a, as a native German speaker, what's been your perception of their machine translation? Are they it's generally? Great. Oh, okay. So they're generally I mean, workable. I mean, context-wise, they all say the same. Just if just different grammar and just different words. I mean, this means this is actually something I learned from Core. Started by user. Mm -hmm, that's the URL where it leads to, and that says the username. This is actually a string from Core. That's not in the plugin. This is just what I took to present that it actually works with these mm -hmm. ones as well. That one would work. That one would work. That one would work, and that one would work as well. These are the machine translation generated by Crowdin's word database. And it actually understands what's going on here because these are all quite accurate. I would say we go with this one because this is the same tense as this one. This would be a okay, so, tense. So they, they offer different verb tenses for you. And you as a German speaker, I, I recognize the word Benutzer, but the others and verb tenses in German are certainly completely unfamiliar to me. Yeah, that would be the user. If I go with this one and can click save on it and I'm already done with it. Yeah, th yeah, this is what I've And if I click on it again, I can see who translated which string. This is my translation from my user and everything can see who contributed which string to the Crowdin project. Somewhat of a Git history, just, just with all the Git part. Excellent. So, so I've got I've got some lower volume plugins that I think I want to attempt this with just to get a sense of it. And and those lower volume plugins. Would you be willing to act as my native German speaker, possibly contributing a translate translation to the platform labeler, for example? Yeah. It's got maybe twenty strings. For sure. Okay, that, that would help me at least get explore it because this. Ultimately, we would have, if every Jenkins plugin opt-in, we would have a thousand plus 
repositories. But yeah. even if it was just Jenkins Core and the top 200 plugins, that would seem like still a very a very attractive way to approach localization, to approach approach translation of of properties, of yeah. messages. Yeah. Excellent. I think currently we have in this repository. I think this one doesn't have as many words as others. Yeah, this one has only 80 words. That's not a lot. But mm. if you have projects with several thousand words, for example, this one, I have 70,000 words to translate in, six, in 36 languages by several hundred contributors. You definitely have people like Proofreader who, act, who frequently check in and read over what people submit. A Proofreader would be something like a pull request reviewer just in Crowdin. Okay, so so are you willing to open up fast async for a quick conversation yeah. about that? Oh, so so there are multiple roles and multiple layers of contribution that people can do where they could they can not just submit translations, they could review and comment on the translations of others. Yeah. For example, these are the languages I think that are the 20 basic languages Crowden enables automatically if you select no languages. But let's say the blue bar is what you translate. Yeah, also sent there. And the green bar is what is approved. For example, let's take part of the German thing. Oh, yes. OK, so this is one that needs, there is some yet to be approved. Yeah. OK. Currently, 70,000, almost 80,000 strings are translated. That's a 100%. And therefore, 12% are approved. So if you were to contribute to this, you would just open it up and you could offer your, your, your feedback on, on proposed translations. Yeah, I could go, I think this, you have several strings here. That would be this one. For example, uh, not crowdsourcing, we want to proofread. We want some feedback on, yeah, could not find edit summary for inputs. That would be the appropriate German string. This is proposed by this user seven months ago. And mm -hmm. if I'm fine with it, I would basically say, yep, that's fine. And on below, I can also see the machine translations from crowd that for the string. And to see so, here, this, yeah, go on. No, go ahead. Excuse my interruption. <laughs> okay. This one is an interesting one because we have a red one and a green one. This is green and because this is an edited string from the repository on GitHub. I updated the local here and Crowley noticed that, fetched it and proposed a somewhat of Git history because this is the old string and this is the new string. So we can also see if someone edits the, edits the root strings here. Yeah. Spare okay, so, so that, that text on the right is hinting to you someone in the GitHub repository made a change that was probably not directly under control of CrowdIn. And this is trying to resolve that change. Is that what it's hinting no, to? It's, it's, it's not trying to resolve it. It's just notifying me that this translation could not be up to date with this string anymore. Ah, because okay. we brought a translation from seven months ago. This, uh, this one was two months ago. And I changed, changed the messages five months ago that this string could not match this anymore. But this doesn't apply here, so I approved it still. Okay, all right. Yeah, and this is the sanity checking you meant before. For example, we have a spell check failure here because Corin doesn't actually know the word because that's the name of the repository right. it's coming coming from. Makes sense. And here we say here, first letters are not capitalized the same way. Yeah, that used to apply, but that doesn't apply anymore because. NBT is uppercase here and NBT is lowercase here. Yeah, now and now okay, so that one that one is a little bit surprising. I'm not sure is NBT an acronym on the left and I'm used to almost everything being capitalized all the time in German. So that's no shock to me that sorry, <laughs> that, that's a terrible American's way of phrasing how, how I observe German. So no, I mean, so, you're, in German, you're capitalizing nouns and names and so right. on. Right. Yeah. But I mean, for sake of reference, I would say we go with the uppercase one because that is how it's actually called in, this, in the source code. Mm. And this is just a failure in the translation when I wrote it. Yeah, so I'd go ahead and, and, and approve this, but correct this one in the source strings as well. 
oh, oh, so what you've done here is you've detected an English language mistake. Yeah. And, and you, you fix it in the German because the translation should be correct, but then you need to go back and also adjust it in the English language in the original string. Yeah. I see. I don't, I don't adjust it in the English language. I adjust it in the source language, which currently applies to all languages I have enabled in the project. I see. Okay. Yeah. But basically everything else, like you can see, argument detection is fine. It doesn't complain here. Spell check fails here because the word Wahrheitswert is lowercase, would be uppercase in German. Yeah, would be upper would be uppercase in German, so it complains. And, here. and that's because, because it's a noun. Word. Because it's a German, it's a German noun. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I'm currently in the proofreading view. I mean, I could comment on it and say, hey, let's uppercases, but I could also go ahead and quickly fix it. And that's it. Excellent. Thank you. Now I see that Zinab's raised her hand. She has a question. Zinab, what, what question did you have? Yeah, um, thank you. So uh, my question is relating to updates. So I know um, in this scenario, he explained that if someone actually submits a suggestion for language and it's updated after. So what if you've already approved this? And sometime in the future, there's no request or anything to, um, to translate that string, but the string is updated in the source repository. Do you still just get a notification that there has been an update to some strings that has been translated before using this? Or like, is there a kind of sync? Uh, so you're asking how to deal with previous Previous contributions like on GitHub via pull requests, how to deal with that? I, th I think our question was, uh, was previously the message was uh, do this, then do that. And now it's do that and then do this. So it's changed. Oh, so if the root message changes. Yes, the, so the root message has been modified. How yes. is that presented to the user? Yeah, I mean, if you are contributing to your repository, you actually get need to get out of this view first. You get notifications if things change, if strings are added. Basically, these are all email notifications for me because I'm a project maintainer. But if I would be a regular user, I would get a notification that a string has changed, that a string has been added. And yeah. OK. So you can go back on it and reapply your changes and update the updated string. So as a as a contributor, I'm uh, in my world. I'm a I'm a native speaker of a language. Let's say Italian, and I then receive email periodically. Hey, these projects that you're supporting have changed some messages. Would you like to update their translations? Is that the the how it feels? Yeah, I currently don't have such an email, but you basically also get notification on currently that new either new strings are added or that strings are updated. Like on GitHub, you get, a, for example, an email for a commit that a new commit has been pushed. Here you would get an email that the string has been updated. Excellent, and, thank you. Yeah. So Alex, I think next step for me is I want to enable this for a few repositories and do some some what I call lightweight tests with you or with you and maybe one or two other native speakers. I happen to know some French native speakers. So I would love to have a German native speaker like you, a French native speaker and, and see how the, how the interaction works, both for me as a maintainer and for my, my French speaking translators to say, oh, I like that better than the old way of doing it. Because we had some great French translations submitted as part of Hacktoberfest, but they did it all, I think, the old way, right? They didn't get to use Crowdin. And I would, I would love to hear their feedback on, hey, Crowdin made it this much easier, or no, I was faster doing it the old way. Yeah, that sounds interesting. I mean, currently, I just showed the way to go for a translator, not the way to set it up. Because I think the way to set it up is definitely not something that is set in stone. You could, for example, do it through the Cloud and Spec UI, like I showed before, go ahead and go via the GitHub button and integrate it via the repository. But you can also go ahead and integrate it via API calls. I mean, it is all possible. 
Well, well, but if I did, for me, part of the attraction is using CrowdIn's web interface. I'm not yeah. sure what would what would motivate me not to use CrowdIn's web interface. That looks like it's it's very effective, very smooth, and your user experience seems to be very positive in being able to contribute German yeah, language that's, strings. That's for sure. I mean, one point when to not the use interface when not to use the web interface would be like, for example, you have many repositories to add, to manage, and so on. For example, if you have several hundred repositories on the Jenkins project on Crowdin, it would be much more feasible to update repository maintainers or proofreaders via the API than do it by hand. I see. Okay, that makes sense, right? So so if we if we develop the concept of French, French, French reviewers and German language reviewers, we would probably have enough people there that we wouldn't want to maintain that manually. We would want that maintained as code. Yeah. And then I we would use the API. I mean, the repository permission updater does somewhat of that, does some sort of automation on that because you don't want to add people manually to the right. teams on GitHub to do it via the IRC bot, if I remember correctly. So you would do something similar here. I mean, for me as a translator, I obviously would prefer the web interface, but from a management aspect, I think the API would obviously be easier to handle translations like adding people, removing people, updating repository access, yeah, but the yeah. integration from WebQI is pretty much straightforward. You would select here, add a new repository. Yeah, I think this current, it, it always loads a bit because I'm already logged in with my GitHub OAuth. So it scans my entire GitHub account of, of private uh, public repositories. And then I can select a repository here. I could do this also with web interface. I don't need GitHub here. And, and so this now in terms of, should this be done to my fork or to the Jenkins repository? And I assume it should be done to the Jenkins CI repository rather than to my fork. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. The base repository you choose here is the base repository the PR is filed against. So if you choose your fork, you have it on your fork and would need to PR it back to Jenkins. But if you just pick the Jenkins repository, like I did with this one on my, uh, account to have the PR straight on your Jenkins repository. I think that would be the way to go. Ah, yeah, right I now I'm already logged into my GitHub account. I could select any repository here and also organization repositories. Then I would set up the branches below which branch we should file the PR against. That would be master or the default branch. And that's basically it. And if I click save, GitHub. Uh, Crowden pushes uh, Crowden.yml file to the repository, which uses it for detection. This is the regex I'm using for the source file. This is a translation file. For example, this is my folder structure, and I and I want to include all properties file from here. I have this one, and the translation path is again this file, but the file name it chooses from above the two-letter code shown in Crowden.properties. You can customize it here too, but you can do it also with WebUI. This file just helps Crowdin to integrate your project. And that's it. It doesn't pollute your project with anything. It just needs this one file in the root repository. And if it files a PR, that would be new Crowdin updates because I didn't update it from this branch. That's the default translation branch. And we have all the German commits we just did now. The way I set it up is to propose any language you translate, even if the language is untranslated, it does still file the PR, but you can configure, configure it to only propose a PR if there is a translation in the file to not have these. Ah, uh, okay. These so, yeah, but, files so, under German. so the example that's on screen right now is showing what I would assume is, is not a healthy thing. It's offering it's allegedly showing German, but in fact, it's used the English words. Yeah, this is just a PR under the Clum header underscore DE properties, like indicating it would be German, but it is actually English and a bare copy of the source string because I didn't configure it differently. But obviously, I think the better way to configure it would be to say, hey, just open a PR if we have a translation here and not right. to open a PR if there's nothing. Yeah, and I would basically label it 
go ahead and merge it. And then I have these files in the border structure, probably squash it, but yeah. And then I can ship my plugin. And it created those files for you. So column.properties did not exist previously for the German and it created them as part of the pull request? Yeah. Uh, let's go back to the project home, actually the public page and German. It does only show the source files. Like I've only column the properties and column header the properties here. But if I edit these files, if I edit these files and save them, it creates these files in the PR according to my file pattern here. I see. Okay. So the file name is the name of the file from before, and the two letters, two letters code is the language I translate to. There are plenty of other placeholders you can name, but this is the file for my Jenkins uses. So it just went with this one. And and that syntax, when it says two letters code, it really means whatever the internationalization code is. So the fact that Brazilian Portuguese is actually four or more letters is not a problem. It, that's just a variable name that we see there. Yeah, that's just a variable. I think- Excellent. The, yeah. Wow. Alex, I think you're going to be invited to offer some German translation for something. This, this is, I am thoroughly impressed. Yeah, I and think this, is, this is definitely a better way to then going via GitHub pull requests if you have no knowledge about Git or GitHub, for example, because you basically don't need it. You can just go ahead, propose some translations, likely engage with the proofreaders if they have a recommendation how to make things different, and that's it. You basically don't work with Git or GitHub at all. If I remember correctly, there was one concern on the mailing list that someone said that license headers would be omitted, but that, that actually doesn't apply. Like we can see in my update PR, the license headers are untouched. Okay, so, so it retains the license from the original root file, yeah. or it copied the, the license from the root file. Yes. Wow. Like you saw my current demonstration, these things also don't occur anywhere in the translation and are not shown at all to the translator because they don't basically matter here. But if you have them in the root translation file, they are also added to the translation file for the language, the PR targets. That, that, that looks very impressive to me. Thank you, Alex. Thanks very much. Yeah, no problem. Glad to be here. <laughs> Thank you. So it feels like next steps are more experiments and we'll, we'll address it. Now, next week I'm out. So we won't do office hours next week for docs office hours, but in two weeks, we could potentially have, have some initial checks on this kind of thing to see, Hey, how did it go? And in the experiment with other plugins. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. You could try to set up your node label parameter plugin. If, I think it's called like that. Yes, yes, yeah. that's see and that's how to integrate it into Crowdin from a maintainer aspect with a web UI. Right. You can see how to set it up properly. Yeah, so so node label parameter is a little more challenging for me because I'm a little less familiar with it. But yes, something like that. Platform label is one I'm very familiar with, but node label parameter, yes, and, and any one of those. I'm hesitant to do Git plugin right now just because of how many people use it. But but once we've seen it work. Well, with a smaller plugin, I'm I'm open to that. Yeah, for sure. Alex, thank you. Thanks very much. Anything else that you wanted to highlight for us here? No, that's basically cleared. I think we went over the user aspect much here. All right. Well, so this is because we've got a recording of it. I'll post the recording and encourage people to to look at it. I'll set some bookmarks so that they can start with already jump right into your demo portion. And we'll start the conversation on community.jenkins.io about the topic. Excellent. This is great. We'll, we're going to reuse this, the recording of this to do more conversations about how should we do translation better in the project. Thank you. All right. Alex, if there's nothing else, I wanted to steal. We've got about eight minutes left before we run out of time here. Are you okay if I take back screen sharing and we look yeah. at other topics? For sure. So Zinab and Elizabeth, you had topics 
the troubleshooting PR, anything else on it, Zenob, that we want to we want to worry about there, or just that it needs to be reviewed? No, nothing else. Okay, nothing great. Nothing else, just All right, so then the, the next one was, Elizabeth, you had questions with regard to insure internships. Could you share with us, you had highlighted before we started the recording of the meeting, some of the things that are going on in your boot camp. Would you be willing, Elizabeth, to tell us a little bit more about the the boot camp you're running and and help us understand that. I am. Um, thank you very much. Good evening, um, everyone. So um, basically, the boot camp um, the boot camp is a women in tech boot camp, and we had um six um six hundred applicants, and we selected three hundred and nineteen girls in various technical fields, which um includes front-end web dev, back-end web dev, data science, digital marketing, product design, blockchain, um, and NFTs. Yeah, so those these are the tracks. So, and these girls are um, actually from six different countries. We have from um, US, from London, we have from um, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Nairobi, and Nigeria. So these are the countries that these girls, that these participants are from. So what we are trying to do now, because the boot camp is for six weeks, and after this six weeks, I do not just want these girls to just go like that. So I want them to gain um, hands-on experience on life project and working, um, what it feels like to work with a team and work in an um, organization or a company. So this is, um, um, I'm actually seeking for internships for these girls, um, if not every one of them, at least a number of them. So um, I don't know how possible this could be. Um, um, and I am also open to suggestions and partnerships regarding this. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so so the you've got a group of of women from we're interested in tech from multiple countries that are are in or have completed this six week camp on various topics. Yeah. And okay. Sorry. Go ahead. All right. So the boot camp is currently going. Um, ongoing this is the third week and it's for six weeks so they have three weeks more to go before the boot camp finishes it's a six weeks training and it's virtual it's online great okay excellent and then now the the idea then was how could we help them know identify where they go next in terms of their experiences, their exploring? So they want to gain more experience. Here, yeah. I, we've got it right there. And, and one way could be open source project involvement, right? Yes. Uh, the challenge for me there is, okay, funding is best, but does your organization have a way to, I assume that these women paid something in order to join the camp or is it that they are chosen and then you fund them while, they, while they're part of the camp? Okay, so um, the thing is my organization, what we, are, um, we have um, a goal and our goal is to get as many women as possible into the tech world. So we do not collect a dime for anybody. Nobody pays for um, anything. So this training is literally very free. So I, um, for now, I um, actually pay the, like not pay, I give um, stipends to the current facilitators and volunteers that work with me because currently I have not gotten any sponsors yet. So I pay from my pockets. Yeah, and I'm doing it, I'm doing, this out of passion and i feel like subsequently i'll get sponsors so these girls do not pay um 
a dime at all. And even before the boot campaign commences, there is usually um, a contract that everybody signs. And um, in that contract, it is clearly stated that you are not to pay any money to um, anybody. And if any member of um, the team asks, um, asks for money, you should reach out to um, either myself or the programs manager. So it's totally free. It's entirely free. Excellent. Okay, so what you're what you're saying is you're providing free training to yeah. these people who participate in the camp, and you've you've warned them, you've alerted them. If anyone attempts to ask you for money as part of this program, you reject them immediately and report to the report to the sponsors yeah. of the camp. Ah, okay, all right. Okay, so that that is fascinating. Okay, so then then the ideas might be, okay, we could we could certainly offer, for instance, well, let's see. I mean, yeah, let, are you okay, Elizabeth, if I give this some thought and we bring it for future conversation? Because I sure. think this needs some needs some more exploring about, okay, are there ways we could we could ask people to, to fund the program you're running, right? Are there ways we could ask organizations? Are there ways we could we could um, persuade Jenkins contributors to, to help in some way with, with the, the presentations you do to, to them? For instance, back end, this is a very Jenkins thing, right? Very much. Yeah. Front end, not so much. You can ask Alex how, how we're not so great on front end all the time. He's he's bringing us into the modern world with front end, but but the front end is <laughs> is Jenkins is Jenkins is not super strong in front end. Just so we're clear. Interesting. Well, Elizabeth, thank you for sharing that. Uh, would you be okay if we carry this as a topic to be sure. reviewed in two weeks? Sure, it's fine. Thank you very much for considering it as a topic. Excellent. Thank you very Hello, much. Ma. Oh, yes, Gina, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I hope Jenkins is doing something about the front end part. <laughs> hey, wait a second. What kind? Yes, yes, we are. Very much so. Well, Alex and Jan Ferracic and Tim Jacome. And now I've, I've got, I've enlisted one more person, um, Adrien Le Charpentier and several others that we hope are all going to be helping with, with getting better on the front end. I'm, I'm not, not disputing that we have lots of work to there. Good points, you know. All right, that's, that's good to hear. Also, um, also, Mark, I remember that during one of our meetings that we had um, in January, Zainab said something about us delving um, into products, product management, product design. I don't know if you can actually remember. I, I do, yes. Okay, because I've not really um, heard about it, although I've not been um, attending meetings though, but I just thought to ask. And that's um, actually one of the courses that these girls are currently taking, product design. Ah, and and that's yeah. So so the design world is 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 not certainly not my strength, but but I I think there are certainly there are certainly interesting people and people who are interested in design and how systems behave, how products behave over web pages, that kind of thing. So, so I'd propose we defer that topic as well, just because I'm running out of time now. But, but I think it's a good topic. And Elizabeth, let's bring it up in two weeks when we meet again. Okay, sure. All right, everyone, thank you very much. Sorry to have to end on, on this note. I, I'm just out of time. No problem. Recording will be posted probably within the next 24 to 48 hours, and we'll start the discussions on community.jenkins.io. Thanks, everybody. All right. Bye. Bye.